channel. Thanks for coming by after my last video. I got it in the comments. Somebody asked about my case prep for 300 Blackout. And I am currently in the process of doing all my brass for my next video, making 175 grain sub X's. So I figured why not make a quick video. I'll go through my, my case prep and try to keep this one as short as possible. But I'll just go through each step, how I get my brass ready, and then we'll make the video about making those 175 sub X bullets. So, all right, stick around. <laughs> So, I had this running for a while. I just use a regular vibration tumbler. Um, my favorite media, you know, doesn't really matter to me. I'll use the corn cob or the walnut. Doesn't really matter. I don't really have a preference. They both do the job. And as far as time in the tumbler, it depends on the brass. A couple hours, four hours tops, I would say. Just leave them in there as long as it takes to get them clean. And uh, that's about it. So let me get these cases out of here. Get them separated. We'll take a look at them. We'll see what we got. And we'll move on. All right. We're going to get these cases out and get them uh, cleaned up here a little bit. Let's see what we got. So actually, I like this little setup from... Uh, Frankfurt Arsenal. Pretty good setup. Now, I do put in my media, I'll show you in a second. Let me get this all dumped out here. Let me get my gun. Get those all dumped out. So, in my tumbler, um, I actually did a little shout out to uh, Warlock Magic Shine. Um, these are just uh, pre-treated cotton balls. You throw one in your media at a time. Um, they're supposed to add a little bit of shine, and I think they really do work. So, um, in your brass, this Magic Shine. I use that. Works pretty good. Uh, they get pretty dirty. Just put it in your media. And... Uh, supposed to make your brass shine up pretty good so, uh, so we run it in the tumbler the magic thing really works and then get some good looking brass in there so let me get these done and we'll move on to uh, we'll move on to our next stage all right so once we get our brass out of our tumbler, we got a hundred or so cases in here. Um, we're going to move on to decapping and resizing in our sizing dive. Get that all set up. Do all that good stuff. Uh, but what I do want to say is, so every step of my process is quality assurance. Um, everything from when I first pick brass up on the range so as I'm as I'm out on the range and I'm picking up brass if I see something that's got a bad dent in it or something like that it immediately gets thrown in the trash quality assurance starts right there um, and every stage that I go through involves some sort of quality assurance every time I put hands or eyes on brass if I see something I don't like it immediately gets thrown out um, and right here I'm sitting here looking at this jug and with all my potential brass and you see this right here 76239 got mixed in so again quality sharps gets pulled out immediately as soon as i see it so we're going to size and decap this brass and as we're doing it again some of it is going to get uh thrown away and I'm not going to be separating any brass at this stage. Um, I'll be separating brass at later stages. So let's get set up right now and uh, get some of these sized and decapped. 
All right, we're all set to uh, size and decap. I gotta tell you, um, I save all these plastic jugs. Can't have enough of them. I use them for everything. I go from this to this, um, and just doing that. So we got our lube pad. I put my, uh, I use uh, case lube, case lube two, uh, RCBS case lube two. Good stuff. You put some of that on the pad, spread it around, just make sure it's wet. And just dump a bunch of them on the pad, roll them out. You can feel them. They're, they're slippery. But if you don't uh, loop, they will get stuck. So I already set up my die to make sure that uh, it's set up perfectly. I didn't skip that step. My die is already set up. You can follow your uh, owner's manual, make sure you set it up. And we just go through and again. Every time I touch a piece of brass, it's quality assurance. And I may see some. So we're not going to do all these. I'm going to bang out a bunch and then uh, I'll move on to my next uh, next step. So we got something. See, that case is overly bent. See that right there? Generally, that one's going to go in the trash. Throw that down in the trash. It's overly bent and won't fit into the uh, die. I don't force it. it. Gets thrown out. I have a ton of brass. There's no reason to use questionable brass. So, all right, let me finish these up and we'll get on to the next stage. Uh, case trimming. Now, <clears throat> in this stage, we're going to separate. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, separate some brass and we're going to separate these into either trimmed or short and the reason that's important is because you can't crimp short brass okay so I trim all my 300 blackout cases to uh, 1 3 1.358 okay Maximum length is 1.368. I trim to 1358. If something comes down to less than 1358, when I go to put it in the trimmer, if I was crimping cases, uh, that short case won't get the proper crimp. Um, doesn't mean they're necessarily not usable. I'm just not going to use those when I am crimping. So in this stage, if I have short brass, um, that is when I'm going to sort them out. What I trim to exact length and what comes up short. Obviously, if they're long, they're going to get trimmed out. So um, they are either going to be perfect or too short. Um, and then I will decide later on if, in fact, um, they will be uh, fused. So I just put a case in there and if I don't get a shiny edge, and I don't know if you can see that, if I get no shiny edge on the case, um, then it's too short. If I get a shiny edge, then I know that I trimmed it, and then it is exactly uh, 1.358 when it is done. So, that is how... I know, and I will run this until I don't get, until we get no more trimming. And then again, so that case, perfectly, it's got a little shiny edge on it, and it goes. All right, and it's tedious, but yeah, I just keep trimming that all the way down. Now, usually I, I will bolt this table down makes it easier I'm trying to do this on camera I'm a little offset so and you can see hopefully you can see that it's got that shiny edge 0.358 now I preset this up so I know that all these cases are going to be perfect so again now if I put a case in here and it doesn't get a shiny edge I know that that case was too short to start with, and it didn't get trimmed at all. 
So that's how I know. Now, like, I don't feel anything on this case. And I got no shiny edge on that case. That case is too short. Goes in the short pile. Okay. And again, lock that in. This one's definitely getting trimmed. And I'll also hook my drill up to this if I'm doing a lot. Um, and there we go. We got some trim cases. So once that is done, let's move on to our next. All right, so this next step, I would say, is probably the most tedious of all the steps, and that is the uh, deburring. I use a hand tool. I'm kind of old school. I run the, the inside and the outside of the deburring tool um, just to make sure everything feels good, feels smooth. Um, so... Yeah, this is old school. It's slow. It's tedious. I just put like just a little shine on the inside. You can see it. Uh, make sure there's no burr on the outside. That's all. Just give it a few twists each one. Um, go through it. But yeah, this is the most tedious part when you actually have to trim brass. The good thing is you don't always have to trim your brass. Especially when you're running subs, you don't get too much case uh, deformation, and they oftentimes wind up uh, well within tolerances. So you don't always have to trim your brass. So that is the next stage, and then we'll move on. All right, at this stage, we have cleaned, we have uh, resized and decapped, deprimed, uh, we have trimmed. And we have deburred. So the next stage that I do is I make my uh, flash holes consistent. And I do that using this countersink bit. It's a number two. Um, and the bit on the end is point zero eight zero which is um, right in the in line with what a flash hole should be most of your five five six and your 300 blackout brass the flash hole will be between point zero seven five and point zero eight five this is uh, point zero eight zero so um, and also what this will do is it will put a slight bevel on the rim of the primer pocket and it makes four seating primers much easier. So I usually run this in my press. We'll do that now and we'll just run these through and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. All right, so we got our drill bit uh, set in here, our countersink bit. Um, and this is going to get a little noisy, so we'll only do a couple, but I'll show you what happens. Um, let me pick out a good one here so you can get a good idea. All right, so here is a regular primer pocket like that, and it's kind of got a 90-degree edge on it. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is putting a little bevel on there and making sure that flash hole is right at 0 0.080. So I just came in like this, I put it in there, I just put it in there a little bit, I let it touch. Just like that. You'll see it gives just a slight little bevel at the edge of the case. I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, and it opens up that flash hole. Or, I mean, in this case, in this case, um, in this case, in this case, um, that flash hole was 0 0.080 or better already. So, because I didn't feel anything. So let's try, let me see what else we have here. Um, is that a boxer? Yeah, this one has a little bit of a crimp in it. So, yeah, I have a crimp primer. You put that in there, you'll feel it. It'll take that crimp away from the edge, give it a slight little bevel, um, and open that 
flash hole up to 0 0.080. They will look good. So we'll just run the rest of these through. And that's that. That's a pretty quick stage. Um, and again, make sure all my flash holes are uniform and it will make seating primers a breeze. So we'll get on to the last step. All right, my last step for uh, brass prep would be seating primers. Now, I don't know if you can see, I'll show you that flash hole again. Where the heck? Let me just say it. Nice flash hole. You see that in there? Look at that. Beautiful. 0 0.080. Plenty of flash. Good ignition. So, um, I like to, to do my primer seating separate. Some guys will do it in the, um, in the other stages. But, like I said, I do it separate. Perfect bullet seat. I mean, primer seat every time. Uh, so... Like I said, I do it in a separate stage, and you really get those primer seat very nicely in there when you uh, take your time and just bevel the edge of the primer pocket. They really go in there nicely. You don't get any bent. Sometimes they catch on an edge if it's, if it's not there, but these are just seating really beautifully perfect primer seat each time so and that is that that is my brass prep from start to finish and these are ready to go i hope you guys like this video i tried to keep it as short and sweet as possible so if you have any questions put them down in the comments as always like and subscribe next video will be 175 grain sub X's for the 300 blackout. Stick around. Hopefully you'll watch that. Like, subscribe, hit the notification so you see when that video's up. All right, thanks for sticking around.